Hello and welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for May of 2023. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kell Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. And I'm Julia Mijas and I'm in San Francisco, California. Let's take a look at what's happening in May. Mm. Happy birthday, Taurus. If you haven't gotten your yearly birthday reading yet, it's not too late to benefit from a thorough look at your solar return birthday chart. It tells you all about the year ahead, and it comes with fantastic affirmations you can use all year to create your best life. You'll find a link for it in the description below. Now let's take a look at May for you, Taurus. Well, on May 1st, already something interesting is going on because Pluto turns retrograde right away at the beginning of the month. Pluto is the lord of transformation and metamorphosis. Every year, Pluto travels forward just a few degrees along the zodiac. This year, it's entered into the new sign of Aquarius from Capricorn, where it's been for more than a decade. And in turning retrograde, Pluto is about to retrace his ground back into Capricorn. And when Pluto does this zigzagging through the zodiac, if you've got any planets in your chart that Pluto is triggering, well, then those parts of you would be thrown into a transformation this year. Pluto in Aquarius is going to take that transformative energy into the tech sector and the sector of innovation, also community and friendship. And in your case, Pluto is moving into the 10th house, and that is the domain of career. So Pluto may be fixing to do some transforming, some metamorphosing, some really big and deep changes in your career. And this is really a long-term transit. Whenever Pluto does officially move into your 10th house, he's going to be there for more than a decade. And you can expect your career to go through some really big and deep changes, which might result in it looking very different by the time Pluto leaves. A really a great topic for a reading, actually. Um, so May 1st, also another thing that happens is that Juno moves on into a new sign too, and that's Gemini. She's been traveling through Taurus for the last couple of months. She's moving on now into Gemini, which is your second house. Juno is the spouse and partner, the social maven, networker, and matchmaker of the Zodiac. She likes to bring that partnership feel everywhere she goes. This is your second house, which has to do with the things that connect us to the physical world. Bodies, food, money. And when Juno comes into your second house, you might want to work these things out in tandem with your partner. So if you wanted to try a new way of eating to see whether it leaves your body and your digestion feeling better, then you might want to consult with your partner or include your partner in those changes. And similarly, since this is a house of finance and getting your finances organized, um, having Juno here can really make you interested in batting ideas around with your partner about how that might be improved. Um, and also, this is a house of the snuggles and cuddles. This is a very physically affectionate domain. And so you might want to have more physical touch and snuggling with your partner while Juno is passing along through this house. She's going to be here for about two months. So uh, I want to talk now about Ceres. At the beginning of the month, Ceres is still retrograde in Virgo in the fifth house which we talked about in your last month's horoscope in April, but she's quickly going to move on and go direct. And you can see it right there. There she is. The little red RX symbol is gone and Ceres is now direct. So she's finished her retrograde period there right around um, May 7th and uh, May 6th or 7th, depending on your time zone. And she's getting ready to move forward creakily at first, slowly at first, 
but um, but she's going to get get the house back in order, especially when it comes to finances. And I'm pretty sure that in your last month's horoscope, I warned you about gambling and speculating and said that if you have uh, gotten yourself into a financial mess because of gambling or um, overspending, um, living uh, too much of a high life, then Ceres has arrived to help you, you know, see where the 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 extent of the full mess and uh, and to untangle all of the little pieces of it and uh, and get things straightened out so that you can go back to a state of balance. And uh, so she's in the final stretch of that process, and as she finishes out. Virgo in a direct motion and then moves on into Libra and into your sixth house, that process will come to a close and oh, what a relief it will be. Hey, Julia, hmm. what is up with the Tauruses of the world in the realm of Mercury, Venus, and Mars, especially Venus, which is a, a planet that really loves Taurus? Oh, indeed she does. Well, Venus is going to spend the first week of May in your second house. This house is super sensual, just like you, because it's naturally ruled by Taurus. So this is going to be the first week of May, a time where you're going to want to maybe spend a little extra money on yourself. Um, you know, you do love nice things, even if you are careful with your money. So this is actually going to be a time where you actually pull the trigger and get some nice things. Mm -hmm. um, it's also a time where you might want to massage, where you might want to go out to eat, for example, would be great for going wine tasting. Then by May 7th, Venus is going to enter your third house. So this is a lovely transit, especially if you do any writing, if any learning, because you could just get a lot of extra pleasure and satisfaction um, from those activities. And I really highly recommend that you plan some day trips, uh, maybe some weekend trips this month, you know, maybe somewhere within a hundred miles of where you live where you can get a car or a train and and just get out there because you'll really get a lot from those trips with venus in the third because she represents pleasure the third are our local surroundings and also a lovely time if you have siblings too. call them up and see how they're doing um because uh, venus is going to bring a little harmony to your relationships there now mercury starts the month off uh totally retrograde in your first house. And this is a very personal house for you. So you could be spending a lot of time reviewing your appearance, rethinking how you come off to other people. Um, Mercury in the first retrograde is a little bit of a frustrating time because you also might feel very misunderstood. You know, this transit makes me think of like when you send a text to someone and then autocorrect totally butchers everything you're trying to say, or you're trying to be really clear with someone and they get a totally different idea of what you meant to say, uh, you know, so so definitely be patient that you might have to go back and clear up some confusion, especially with how you communicate to others. Now, May 1st is an important day because Mercury will be exactly conjoined the sun. And we call this a lesser epiphany day because Mercury is retrograde when it's direct, it's greater epiphany day. Um, but this is going to give you a little light within the fog of the Mercury retrograde. You might get some epiphanies, some insight into how you're personally coming off to other people, how you're articulating yourself, or what you should do with your appearance. Um, then by May 14th, Mercury finally goes direct, and that's going to start smoothing over all these miscommunications I've been telling you about. Finally, Mars, our friend, the, the very spunky, the very feisty, the very driven Mars, starts off in your third house. Now, this is interesting because Venus will be in the third at the same time. So um, it's, you're going to have like a little bit of push and pull uh, between Venus and Mars. Mars is going to give you a lot of energy and drive to do third house things. So all that stuff I was saying about get out, have a pleasure trip, um, definitely uh, goes double with Mars in this house because the best way to handle Mars is if we bottle him up too much, he can turn into conflict. Um, so trying to get out and have some type of trip um, would be a really, really good use of this transit. Now, if you do have any siblings, Venus in the third will mean that you guys are getting along. But to really 
really, really make sure that things go smoothly with your siblings, I highly recommend that you guys find some sort of physical activity to get involved with, whether that's, um, you know, going out for a walk together or doing some project together, um, because you could actually get a lot of stuff done with them, um, you know, and then having Venus in there will just kind of make, make things go a little extra well. Um, now, Mars in the third can sometimes be a little bit snappy. Um, and since Mercury is retrograde in your first for, for the first, you know, part of the month, some of your miscommunications might come off coming off a little bit angrier than you mean to, or being a little bit sharp when you could have said things in a little bit of a cushier way. Um, so those are definitely things to be aware of. Then by May 20th, Mars goes into your fourth house of family and home. And this is where you might run into some flare-ups with your parents, um, because the fourth house is part of the parental axis there. Um, now, again, Mars in the fourth can best be used if you do something where you get out a lot of energy at the, the home front. This would be a good transit for cooking, but be careful of not burning yourself or using sharp knives. <laughs> you know, be, put all your attention if you're chopping things up or, you know, you, you've got a high, you're doing a flambe or something, you know, uh, you know, just if you're a little careful of Mars related things with cooking, this could be a fabulous transit for just, you know, cooking up a storm or painting a room or doing some other home improvement uh, project. And uh, since the fourth house also re uh, represents the past, it's quite possible that what really ticks you off during that transit is so from something from a long ago, which is just triggering you now. Um, you know, so so try to be try to be open with your anger in in sort of measured ways, because the fourth house is also a very private place, too. And we, we can bottle things up here as well. And definitely find some projects to really jump into around the home front. Uh, you'll get a lot of stuff done and uh, you will be able to sort of smooth over Mars's jagged edges. Mm, so true. Hi, Jamie here. I just wanted to say thank you for watching this video. And if you're enjoying it, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Your support helps keep this content free, and you can also get access to workshops where I will cast your chart live in the workshop. The link can be found in the description below. Thanks again, and let's get back to the video. Well, to continue that theme of the Mars jagged edges, we have a full moon and lunar eclipse in Scorpio coming on May 5th. Here it is, um, a very sensitive, even you might say hypersensitive moon in Scorpio in your house of relationships and partnerships, facing off against a couple of Taurus placements in your first house. So no matter how patient you might be, and no matter how solid and stabilizing you might be under this eclipse, you still might be face to face with somebody or nose to nose or toe to toe with somebody who's just in a nasty mood. Now, lunar eclipses, they show us our shadow through how we feel. And, and so I could see this eclipse going a couple of different ways for you, Taurus. One is that you're facing a partner who is just loaded with a lot of difficult feelings, possibly gloom or depression or possibly anger or things that have been suppressed and kind of festered for a while that just kind of explode out. Um, and so you may find yourself just wanting to like retreat and be more stable than ever just so that you can manage that storm going on over there. Um, but also you might have all kinds of feelings coming up in your own self about your partner or about your partnership, which maybe are just hitting the surface now and which you just haven't been looking at for a while. Um, so I said eclipses show us our shadow and that lunar eclipses do that through how we feel through our emotions and they can stir up emotions that have been buried for a long time and that erupt in a rather volcanic way. <clears throat> so definitely watch out uh, for conflict with a, a partner, you know, whether a personal relationship like a marriage or uh, somebody that you're dating or uh, a business connection uh, under this eclipse. Um, then the other moon of this month is a new moon in Taurus, which is happening on the 19th. 
And that one appears in your first house because it's happening in Taurus. And I have to tell you, this moon is worth waiting for because by the time we get to this moon, the eclipse season is done and the eclipses were really tough, but they're over. And this moon is loaded with harmony. It just is such a feel good moon. A new moon is a great time for new beginnings. This one lands in your first house. It occurs, you know, potentially if you have sun in Taurus, it occurs close to birthday time. It might even be uh, on your birthday, in which case you could carry the good feelings of this moon with you throughout your whole birthday year. And um, so the feeling of rebirth and freshness and newness is so wonderful. And the moon in Taurus is so stabilizing and grounding and solidifying and fertile too. This is definitely the kind of moon in which you can conceive if that's something that you're wanting to do. And if you're not wanting to conceive, I would definitely be reaching for that contraception under this moon. You can find out a lot about both of these moons on our website's forecast page, pandoraastrology.com slash monthly hyphen forecast. There are videos about both of these moons, explaining them in more depth and telling how to utilize them. And then the last thing I want to mention is the seasonal shift. You can see that in the beginning of the month, there's a very big emphasis in the sign of Taurus, really filling up, overfilling, really it's spilling over um, your first house. And so, so much attention and emphasis on yourself and how you're being and your actions and your behaviors and who you are and your identity and your boundaries. All of those are first house themes. Wherever the sun goes, we want to bring the sunlight of our high quality attention because when you shine that sunlight into an area of life, things can throw, thrive and flourish there. When the sun is traveling through the first house, it's great to accept all of the high quality positive attention that the people in your life want to give you. Whether that's in terms of a crazy surprise party that you didn't expect and didn't even really want, that's your friends loving you and trying to let you know how much they appreciate you. And it's great to just receive that and bask in the warmth of that. However, with the seasonal shift on the 19th, the sun of the 21st, there it is, the sun leaves Taurus along with other planets, leaves Taurus and moves on into Gemini, your second house, and brings the emphasis to a new arena. Uh, as the sun moves into Gemini, it's good to bring your attention to thoughts and communication and learning and ideas. And these are very Gemini factors. So bringing your attention there is a really good thing. But also the sun moves into your second house, which is a domain that you really kind of love because it's such a Taurus type of domain. This is saying as long as the sun is in your second house, which lasts for about 30 days starting on the 21st, that you should put your high quality attention on your money, your budgets, your spreadsheets, how you organize your money, how you earn it, save it, spend it, budget it, all those good things. Um, this is a really great thing to pay high quality attention to while the sun is passing through this house. Also how you eat and what you eat, you know, the foods that you eat and how they feel in your body and to really, really check in with how they feel in your body when you're eating them and thereafter. So this is a really good 30 day period for the cultivation of your body, your relationship to the physical world, your eating, your money, and underneath all of that, your sense of being a valuable and valued member of the physical world, which you absolutely are, Taurus, so why not celebrate it? Well, that's all for today. If you love Pandora Astrology's free and informative horoscopes, please do hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share our horoscopes with your friends. We make these horoscopes for you for free, and if you appreciate it, supporting us on Patreon is the best way to show it. Share our horoscopes with your friends, too. Enjoy your May, and until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye-bye.